Hey everybody. A friend of ours had asked if I could forge a couple of rustic brackets that they could use to hang a sign that they bought for their house. Uh, we thought that would make a great video, but I know not everybody has a forge or all of the tools needed to follow along. Uh, so I decided I'm gonna break this into two separate videos. So the first video, we'll make a basic farm forge. And in the second video, we'll work on those brackets for my friend. The idea is to show that you don't have to have a professional forge to just do simple blacksmithing. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, how we can just use things, scraps that you have laying around or things that you can acquire for free or for on the cheap to put together a simple farm forge to do simple blacksmithing. For this project, I'll probably be doing some cutting, grinding, welding, and I know not everybody has the same tools that I may have, uh, but I'm gonna show that you can build this just using your imagination, some creativity. Uh, I've seen some great forges that were primitively made just out of clay and rocks right on the ground, and they get the job done that needs to be done. Uh, the idea is we're not building a professional forge. We're not gonna be making swords and knives for sale. This is just to do simple repairs and simple projects on your homestead. So follow along and watch while I collect a bunch of junk that I have laying around and build a tool that can help you become more self-sufficient. Excuse the shirt. I'm taking a break from our chores today. It was in the 40s when we got up and it's in the 80s now, so New England. Anyway, what I'd like to show you is Traditionally, uh, farm forges are made from brake drums, old truck brake drums. They're a big, very heavy iron uh, bowl, and that's what a lot of people use as their uh, base for a farm um, forge. And uh, not everybody has an old truck parked in their backyard. So rather than going with the brake drum, I'm gonna try to find something that's a little easier to find for most people and then we'll, uh, we'll build a forge from that. Another option is to use an old bullet-filled grill that isn't being used as a grill anymore. Again, you've got this metal bowl. It's designed to take high temperatures and heat. Uh, the convenience with a grill is you've got a lid that you can close to keep it dry when you're not using it. Uh, they usually have wheels, which I'm probably gonna steal for our build. Um, and a couple of shelves that you can even use just for uh, a little work surface. This one's a little too rickety, so I'm not gonna use it, but this is another option. If you've got any old propane tanks laying around, I've seen people make these into forges. Just make sure that it's opened, drained, fill it with water to make sure all the gases are out. You don't wanna cut one of these things either with a torch or even with a grinding wheel, if there's any propane, it can be pretty dangerous. But again, you can cut one of these either in half this way or even this way and make your bowl for the forge out of an old propane tank. We're not gonna do that either. Well, I've collected all my junk. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go over what each piece I'm in, kind of envisioning and how to use it and, and why I picked what I picked. Okay, uh, as the base, I'm gonna go and use this steel wheel. It's, um, I don't know, a 15 or 16 inch rim, but it's got a nice deep bowl. It already has a hole in the middle and I'll explain that later. And I think old steel wheels are something anybody can get their hands on. If you don't have one laying around, you can probably find one on the side of the street or go to a local dump and pick one of these up for relatively nothing. Okay, I also grabbed a couple of old fence posts. These are really heavy steel posts. Uh, I like the idea uh, with the grill that it had wheels and it was easy to move around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make three legs out of this post and I'm gonna use a couple of old lawnmower wheels that I had laying around. And uh, we'll see if we can get this thing so it's a little easier to move around when we're not using it. Okay, I also picked up uh, this old piece of sheet steel. What I'm gonna use this for, as you can see on the rim, 
there are some holes here around the edge. Uh, I'm just gonna fill these holes and possibly uh, the lug holes as well if they get in the way or if I don't need those. The only hole I want is a centered one right here. Okay, and the last piece is I found a couple of old spent uh, fire extinguishers. Uh, they're two different sizes. I'm not sure which one or if I'm gonna use both. I'm gonna use first, uh, but basically I'm not using these as fire extinguishers. What I'm gonna do is cut the top and the bottom off and use this as a large diameter pipe. That'll get welded right here on the bottom. This will be the bottom of the forge. And it's gonna serve two purposes. That's going to be where the air comes into the forge and also where the ash can come out of the forge, out of the bottom. Um, I'm not sure if these are made out of steel or if they're made out of aluminum. I'll find that out a little bit later. Uh, if they're made out of the wrong metal, I've also got this large diameter piece of pipe that I can use and I can weld that onto the bottom. But we'll see when we get there. Uh, so I guess the next step is to start cleaning stuff up and start welding it together. Well, it turns out the fire extinguishers were made out of aluminum. So I'm going to use some old spent propane bottles or map gas. Um, I don't recommend using these. Uh, I'm going to, if you want to be reckless and endanger yourself, you could follow along. <laughs> Otherwise, I recommend just fi find a piece of pipe that's already open at both ends that you can use. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the bottle's empty. I know it is, but... And you can do that just by sticking a pin into the end here and pushing down on that relief. Nothing's coming out, so it's probably empty. But one more safety. I'm going to make a little tool to reach in here, unscrew this pressure relief valve, and pull it out. And that opens all the way to the bottle. With that open, I know that it's safe to work on. I made this tool out of an old screwdriver. I just cut the end off and then I cut a slot in the tool. Uh, this fits into this hole. It goes over the relief pin and the slot straddles the screw that's in here. So I'm going to just unscrew the emergency valve And once that's unscrewed, I'm just going to take a pair of needle nose pliers, reach in, and pull that safety pressure relief valve out. That opens a hole all the way up, and I can fill this hole with water. The water will rise and push any remaining gas out of the propane bottle. That'll make it safe for me to drill holes in it, cut it however I need, and I'll get back to you as soon as I have one of these cut open. I got both sides cut on my pipe. This one's about the size of a Doritos can. And like I said, uh, you're probably better off just finding a pipe to use rather than cutting a propane bottle. But if you like to take chances, make sure to wear your safety glasses. Go ahead and get it cut. I'm just gonna sand down the ends, make it a little easier to work with. And after I finish a second one, I'm going to join the two together and I'll show you that. finished cutting the pieces uh, we have this piece here which is going to be the air intake and then this piece here which is going to be our ash drop uh, and I cut these to fit together like that and then this will be attached to the bottom of the wheel rim so any ash that builds up will drop down and we'll have a little door here to dump it and our air will be blowing in here from the side and that'll come up into uh, the pot to 
to uh, help ignite and, and, and heat up the coal bed. So the next thing I need to do is just clean up the this label that's on here in the paint, get these nice and clean so that they're ready to be welded together. And I'll come back to you as soon as I have that done. Got it all welded up. Um, I taped off the ends and I primed this with a high temp paint just so it doesn't rust on me. And it's gonna work. Don't laugh at my welds, they work. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm going to do for a trap door for the bottom of this uh, T-piece is the bottom of one of those propane bottles. I'm just going to use that as the door on the bottom here that can open and close to dump the ash. I'll show you that when it's finished. And I'm going to use an old bike chain for a hinge. I'm just going to knock off a few of the links and like this. Uh, this will be tack welded onto the bottom and then tack welded onto the T to allow this to hinge open and closed. And I'll show you that when it's done, it's kind of hard to describe it, but when you see it, you'll get it. I finished welding on that bike chain hinge just to show you more how that worked. Uh, and don't critique my, my welds. <laughs> I know they're horrible. Uh, but see how this is going to hinge that bottom door. Okay. At the same time, I also welded on a bar, a piece of bar that I found and an old lug nut. And this is my lever to open and close the door, but it's also a counterweight so that the door stays shut. So now that this part is finished, uh, the next step is get this all painted up and we'll be attaching this to our wheel rim. I almost forgot before I get started putting all of this together, I've got all these holes in the rim to deal with and that's gonna vary from rim to rim depending on what you're using. Uh, but what, I, what I've got, I've got these little carriage bolts that fit right in the lug holes. I'll just put one in each of these holes, tack weld that in, that'll take care of that. And then I took just thin plate mail and uh, cut it to this dimension. I'm just gonna tack weld these to cover up these little square holes here. Once I get all those covered, this will be all sealed up and we can move on to the next step. Now that I've got all those holes plugged up, uh, the next step would be to put the legs on. So I've marked three equal spots where I'm going to put those legs. And I just kind of have to um, cut different angles on the bottom just to make them fit a little better so I can weld them in at least three points to make sure it's a nice uh, solid connection. But I'm going to get those legs on and then I'll bring you right back. Well, I got the legs all welded on and I added or bent up and added this circular piece here. That was just a rod that I had laying around. It was all bent up and mangled. I straightened it and then I bent it into a circle to fit just to add a little extra support uh, to the legs. Um, since two of these legs are gonna be getting wheels, I took the third one and just welded a little cap on the end of it here, just so it gets a little more support sitting on the ground. Uh, and then with the two legs that are getting wheels, I drilled out holes to um, attach the wheels. So what I'm gonna do now at this point, I think is I'm gonna spray all of this with some high temp paint. Again, just to kind of protect what I've done so far. I'll get the wheels on it and actually maybe before I paint it, we'll attach that T piece that we made earlier right here on the hub. And when that's all done, I'll get back to you and show you what we've got. Well, we finished putting the majority of this together and I threw another 
coat of paint on everything just to seal it up so I didn't have everything rust on me. Uh, ran out of high temp paint, so I did the legs with just black Rust-Oleum. Uh, they're not going to get hot, so I'm not too worried about that, but I was sure to only use high temp on the areas that I know are going to be getting hot. Stove paint, if whatever you have, as long as it's a thousand degrees or higher, should be fine. Uh, but this is basically how it's going to work. It's on wheels to get it around, a little easier to move. Uh, this is the dump. Just lift that to dump the ash. And this is where the input's going to be. We're going to hook like a an old blow dryer, or you can use a shop vac if it has an exhaust. We're going to hook up to here, and that'll blow out of the center of the fire. So the air will come up through here, and that's what's going to keep our fire nice and hot, whether you're using coal or coke, or if you're just going to use charcoal. I'm probably going to use charcoal, or I may even just use hard wood to show you what's possible without anything special. Uh, but one thing we need to do is make a, gray, a grate or a grill over this so that the charcoal doesn't fall through the hole. Uh, and what I found were these old galvanized nails that were used when the, the log cabin was nailed together. Um, so I'm going to weld these together and make a small grill to go over the top of this. Once that's done, we'll move on to the next step. And it's almost time to test this out and show you how it works. Well, my little nail grill is all set. It's all just tacked together. Uh, and that's gonna sit right here just to keep the ash from going down that hole. <laughs> okay, our next step is to actually fill this with clay and if you don't have any clay where you live, uh, I'll show you a quick, cheap way of putting together some clay to line our, uh, our fire bowl here. If you don't have uh, natural clay or even uh, river clay or whether it's gray clay or red clay, it doesn't matter. If you don't have that, one thing that you can do is you can use a natural uh, 100% clay kitty litter as long as it's fragrance free uh, what I'm gonna do here is just I'll fill this bucket with clay or kitty litter and then I'm gonna add some water mix it up and uh, and I'll show you what I've got when I'm done okay here's the uh, kitty litter all mixed up I mixed it by hand uh, you want to make sure to be very thorough make sure there aren't any dry pieces in here uh, and you want kind of a consistency of a very dry sticky kind of uh, clay you, you don't want it to be overly wet if it's dripping if there's any water pooling up in here then there's too much water uh, uh, it's going to be wet and sticky but it's it's not going to be runny drippy wet you want to be able to form it into a ball without really squeezing out any water and then what we're going to do is we're going to pack and line the inside of our wheel rim. And when I have that done, I'll show you. Here it is all set with the clay inside. And you can see how I did that. I kind of just pushed it down into the rim. And the idea is to create kind of a funnel that leads down to the center. Uh, the clay serves a couple purposes. It acts as an insulator, so you can keep all your heat concentrated to in the fire and not outside uh, on the rim. Uh, it also protects the rim from getting burnt through if the fire gets too hot. And it also, because it's a funnel now, that clay is kind of funneling inward, it feeds all of your coal down to the hot spot right there in the center where the air is going to be blowing up. So that's why we do the clay lining. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is hook up some kind of a blower, whether it's a hair dryer or a shop vac or whatever it is, you be creative. I'll probably go find a, an old blow dryer in the house. Don't let Marilyn know. I'm sure she'll see the video and, and be happy with me. But I'll get that hooked up. We'll get a fire in this. 
and uh, you get to see how it works. Now, before you can burn anything in here, you really have to let that clay dry though. You don't wanna start a fire in here while that's wet. Once it's dry though, we'll give it a test and I'll show you how it works. It's been a couple days and the clay is starting to dry out. You can see it's cracking around the edges and has some splits going, going down. And that's fine, that doesn't matter. Uh, the idea is that it's there and it's gonna act as an insulation for us. Uh, it probably could use a couple more days drying, but it's been really wet here and rainy and it's dried to the touch. I'm sure most of the moisture is deeper in the clay, uh, but I'm gonna fire it up anyway. Uh, I think putting a wood fire in this would be enough to help dry this out more uh, and it shouldn't really hurt this. Uh, the other thing we're going to be doing, too, is attaching our blower uh, or bellows. Uh, and you can use uh, commonly like a blow dryer, a shop vac, uh, if it has an exhaust, um, a hand pump bellow, a box bellow, or, uh, or even like a crank bellow. They make a lot of different things that you can use. I'm going to be using this old blow dryer I found. Um, I just need to find a way to attach it here because it's a little bit loose. Once I get that done, I'll get right back with you. Steve, have you seen my blow dryer? What color is it? It's black. Nope. Okay, thanks. I found this old piece of conduit that I'm gonna be using. Uh, the blow dryer fits snugly in here and I shaved down the edge just a little bit but this fits into our air intake nice and snug uh, I don't think this is gonna get real hot it should warm up a little bit but not enough to melt any of this so I'm not really that concerned if I see that this is starting to get softer or melt I'll have to extend this pipe out a little bit more but I think this will work fine so our next step is to plug this in build a small fire inside of our uh, fire pot here and we'll let that burn down a little bit. We'll build, I'm going to use uh, just hardwood instead of charcoal. Uh, it's gonna make a fire that's hot enough to work our steel, but not hot enough to forge weld. To do that, you're gonna to have to use charcoal or coal or coke or something much harder for that. Uh, but just to get things started, we're gonna use hardwood like oak I'm going to cut into small pieces uh, we'll build that fire that'll finish drying this out and we'll see if we can heat up some metal now once I get this fire lit and, and lit decent so it's burned down and I have a decent coal bed at the bottom uh, I'm gonna add some more hardwood pieces uh, the pieces that I added are you know small hardwood some of this is blueberry from uh, bushes that we had trimmed up a few years ago. Uh, some of it's oak. I've got some maple in here, but hardwood pieces, they don't have to be huge. If all you have are logs, you can break them down into smaller bits. Uh, the idea is you want to, um, to build a very hot, hot, sustainable fire. Uh, one reason you don't use typically wood when you're, you're forging is because you're gonna be spending more time adding wood to this fire and maintaining it uh, than you are going to be hammering on your metal. So I really do suggest that you uh, either make your own coal. And if you don't know how to do that, I can, I can always make a video on how to make charcoal, but I'm sure there's other videos out there. Either make charcoal, use coal or use uh, coke or some other uh, material that's going to burn much hotter, which will allow you to uh, forge weld metal together. That's basically heating up two pieces to a point where you can beat them together and, and they'll become one. Uh, you won't be able to do that with a wood fire, but you will be able to shape metal. And that's really all we're, we're gonna be doing uh, probably in the next video when I make those sign hangers. Okay, now that we have a decent coal bed, what I'm gonna do is I've um, got this piece of steel I'm just going to use this as an example. I'll stick this in the sweet spot, which is kind of in the middle, right above those uh, grades that we built, that grid. And we want to make sure it's covered with coals. 
and then I'm gonna crank up the blower. And we'll try to get this metal to temperature. Once it's at temperature, I'll show you what we've got and we'll hammer at it a little bit. Okay, we've uh, probably gotten this to the point of working it. You can see it's got an orangey color to it. It's soft enough at this point that we could probably bring it to the anvil and do a little bit of shaping. So let's head over there and beat on this a little bit. Okay, and you only really want to beat on metal until it starts losing that reddish orangey color. Uh, once that color goes away, you, the metal's getting hard again. You don't want to keep beating on it because you can screw up your anvil uh, or you can crack or, or damage the metal that you're working on. So you're basically going to keep going back and forth, heating up your metal, getting it to the point uh, where you can work it and going back to the anvil. Uh, I'm not really going to do anything with this piece. This is more of an example. But what I'll do next is I'll show you what you can do to use uh, for tongs, a hammer, and an anvil if you don't have those things. I've let the coal bed really burn down in this because I wanted to show you what I was talking about when I said the, the sweet spot. Uh, down towards that grill that's down here at the base, that's where the air is going to be blowing out. And that's where the high fire is going to be at its hottest. Uh, so just to show you the reason why we have air blowing into this, this looks like it's pretty much out. Uh, but if I were to flip this blow dryer just on low, you can see how quickly this comes back to life. And it still has enough life in it there. I can probably heat the metal two, three more times before I have to add more wood to it. Uh, but it gets very, very hot in a very short amount of time. If I shut the blow dryer off, it'll slowly die back down to coals. And the reason we did all that lining with the clay is because this pipe, nice and cool, and even the sides of this are are fairly cool. Uh, it doesn't really start getting warm until I get right up at the top where there isn't any clay to insulate it. But there's no heat anywhere on this right now. Now, if I was gonna use it all day long, it'd probably heat up a little bit. Okay, so a few tools that you're gonna need, uh, and they don't have to be specifically for blacksmithing, but you're gonna want a nice pair of heavy gloves, welding gloves, uh, heat resistant fire type gloves. Uh, you're going to want safety glasses. Make sure to cover your eyes. You don't want a hot, hot spark or a piece of metal jumping up at you. You should have some kind of a wire brush to clean up your work. Uh, and if you don't have tongs for your blacksmithing, you can use a pair of vice grips. You can use a pair of channel lock pliers. Um, you can use just a, a regular old pair of pliers. Uh, something to hold your work that's going to that's going to heat sink some of that heat away from what you're working on and away from your hand. It gives you a little bit more reach. Uh, you just have to really get into the habit of doing everything with your tongs or your pliers and not reaching out without thinking and grabbing something that may be really hot. And as far as hammers go, you know, you can use a blacksmith's hammer. You can use a ball peen hammer. Uh, I've got this, I believe, is a, an upholstering hammer. Any kind of a hammer really is going to work. The heavier the hammer, uh, the easier it's going to be because you won't have to swing as hard or hit as hard to if you're working with a larger piece of metal. But, I mean, if all you have is a claw hammer, you know, use what you've got. 
Uh, and then as far as anvils go, now the anvil that I'm using, I think I paid maybe $75 for. So they're not that expensive. You can find them used for a decent price. And they go from that all the way up to a couple thousand dollars, depending on how large uh, and, and, and how well it's made. But just to get you by, um, I've seen people use rocks. Not that I'd recommend it because it doesn't give you a perfectly flat surface. It doesn't give you um, a hard surface to beat against and you can chip the rock, but it's something in a pinch. Another thing that you can use is a maul or a large hammer. Drive it right into the ground just to keep it stable. And then using the face of it as your anvil, that's another thing you can do and it's been done. It's a nice solid mass of metal that you can beat against, uh, but even more preferably would be a maul that sharpened at one end. You can drive it right into a log and that'll keep it a little bit more stable. Plus it adds the mass of that log to it. And again, you would use the face of it as your anvil. But those are just a few things that you can use just to get you started. And if you find that blacksmithing is something you really enjoy doing, then uh, you could pick up pieces as you go. Pick up a pair of tongs, pick up a small anvil, uh, and start building your blacksmith shop. Now I know somebody's going to comment or say you're never supposed to hit two hammer heads together because you can break or damage your hammer. Uh, but the idea is you're, you're not hitting this hammer against this hammer or against your anvil. You're hitting soft metal that's between the two of them. And as long as you're a decent aim and hit the metal that you're supposed to be hitting, you'll never be hitting your hammer against the anvil or the other hammer head. You're only going to be striking soft metal and that shouldn't hurt your hammer or whatever it is you're using as an anvil. As long as that metal's kept hot and soft. And one, one last thing to go over with this too. Um, looks like our fire is out, out. Um, is our ash dump that we created. I just threw a bucket under here to catch the ashes. Uh, but this is why we added this dump. I can just go ahead and dump the ashes out into my bucket here. And that's what that's for. All the ashes that are collected up here are gonna drop down into this chamber. And that's what our little handle is for, is just to open that up and dump those out. And whatever's left inside, you can just leave it in there. It's not gonna get in the way. It's gonna create uh, a bed for the next fire that you build. So I wouldn't worry about cleaning that out too much. If you end up with clinkers, or if you end up with, with um, large chunks that are blocking that grill, you can go ahead and clean those out. But aside from, you know, it's regular pieces of coal or ash that are in here, just, you can leave those, that's fine. Well, now that we got this out of the way and we talked about some of the basics, uh, I'll be putting a video together where I can make that sign hanger for my friend. And we'll use this forge and some of the basic tools that we went over to do that. So if you have any questions about how this was built or about how to build a forge or uh, anything that relates to this, or if you have anything to share, put it down in the comments below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with anybody you think might like uh, what we do on our channel. And until that next video, I'll see you later.